So each and every one of us uh, has a special call in our lives. As we gather to celebrate the sacred mystery, let us pause to mind recognize our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, in what I have felt to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most in this fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary and the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have mercy. Yeah. 
This is a grace before God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his footsteps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was insulted, he returned no insult. When he suffered, he did not threaten. Instead, he handed himself over to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body upon the cross, so that free from sin, we might, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed, for you had gone astray like sheep, but you have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. Please stand for the first proclamation. Please be seated. 
Good morning again, my dear brothers and sisters of Christ. As we heard today, we are celebrating the Good Shepherd Sunday. Good Shepherd Sunday. Vocation Sunday. Where the church invites us to pray. To pray for, more especially for our young men and women who are discerning their own calling in life, their vocation in life, where God calls them and what God calls them to do and how He would like them to serve Him. Yes, it is a Sunday. We need to pray for all those dedicated themselves in the service of the Lord. For priests, religious brothers, sisters, for even teachers, those who are in for laity, those who are doctors, nurses, who, have, who are exercising the profession where they can make where they can bring the kingdom of God, where they can bring Christ, and through them, they can experience the presence of God. They can help the Lord build up the kingdom of God here. They can build the kingdom of God in reality. Each baptized is called just to do, to do so. Certainly, God calls us, calls priests among the community, among men, among humanity. It is among us, among you. God calls His shepherd. He calls us to be His shepherd, to lead His people. But one thing we need to remember, we it doesn't cause us to lead the people to, our, to ourselves. It calls us to lead his people to himself. And sometimes we may think that we, the fact that we are serving the Lord, we are just that. No, we are serving the Lord. It is, a, it is grace. It is grace. Not because we deserve that. Because God calls us. God does us favor to lead his people and he invites us to do it well to do it with determination to do it with conviction and to do it faithfully and to serve him. because it is through us my brothers and sisters the people of God could experience the presence of God and uh, what is so amazing my friend a priest, a priest is someone that God called among his people, is someone that God put aside to do his service, to offer sacrifices on behalf of his people. Because whenever the priest stand right here back on the altar, the priest stand in persona Christi, in the person of Jesus Christ. It is Christ himself. When the priest lay his hands on the bread and wine, it is not just the priest doing so. The priest does not have power to do so, my brothers and sisters. God is using us, human beings. Human beings through us. He's using our faculty. He's using our, you know, our, 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 all of us to make himself present, available to his people. Now you can say why he doesn't do it by himself, he doesn't do it by him. Yes, because he all God always wants us, you and me, to cooperate, to do your part. To do your part is not just sitting idle like that and not doing anything. God wants you, want us to be involved. 
to be involved in building up the kingdom, to build up the kingdom. And that's why it's so important, my brothers and sisters, to pray for our priests, for all those dedicated themselves to the service of the church. And to pray, to encourage young people to embrace this calling too in their choices, eh? in the choice they are making, for them to think about, about priesthood, about serving the Lord, how they could serve the Lord. And sometimes parents are making big plans. They are making big plans and want to send their kids to the school, to the big school, they make sacrifices, all this stuff. But when it comes to serve the Lord, this is the last thing, eh? This is the last thing they remember. Or something, if they even think about it. Because sometimes, they, what, they see, what they see is the money. Making, have a good future, have a good life. Have a good life. And let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, for me, no, there is no better life, no better joy that I could have, that I have, is being a priest. Being a priest to serve the Lord. To serve the Lord. Yes, certainly the Lord calls us to do different things in life. But this particular vocation is a special vocation. It's a special one. Not because of what it comes with it, but for you to be able, to be able, you know, to be an instrument, an instrument for the Lord, for the Lord to use you as a servant, as a servant to serve His people, to serve Him, to His people in the service of, the, of, of His church. And that's why a priest is always someone, the same way God is, uh, the same way God is semper, semper agent, eh? Agent, semper agent, and semper, eh? Quietus, God, that means uh, God is always active. God is always active, but God is always at rest. We Christian, we need to always active, eh? To always active at the same time, we need to always at rest, to always in contemplation, to always in prayer, to always to whatever we do in life, we need to have in front of our mind, in front of our heads, in our hearts, the Lord present. It should be our motivation, our goal to do the will of God, to do the will of the servant of the Lord. Whatever you do in life, my brothers and sisters. If you see it as a vocation, if you see it as a service, and then you will always want to go further, to, to, to do some sacrifices, and to not let money, power, power overcome you, and to go in as an arrogant person, and sometimes when you are serving the Lord, Oh, whatever service we are doing, you know, we let power, we let power, uh, you know, wants us. We, wait, we, we let ourselves, we, we become self-centered. We become self-centered. And then when we become self-centered, what happened? Is that the work of the Lord? No. You're not doing the work, the work of the Lord. You, you, are, you are doing yourself self-service. Self-service. So it is very important, my brothers and sisters, to, to know whatever we do in life, we do it for the Lord. And we do it for the glory of God. And it is a, a responsibility that each Catholic, each Christian has to encourage our young people to make good choice. Whether it is a religious life, whether it is priest life, whether it is a, you know, a vocation to, to marriage, and to teach it to whatever we do, whatever they choose to do, but we need to lead them, we need to help them understand their primary, the primary and first and foremost, and the primordial, the primordial mission is to serve. It is not just to make 
money. Money should not be the first motivation of what you do. And if money is that, you will be a, a greedy person. Eh? You will be a greedy person. You will be a greedy person. So it should be service. Service of the Lord. So today we celebrate the Good Shepherd. And Jesus is the Good Shepherd of the sheep. The Good Shepherd of the sheep of God. He came to lead us back to his Father. Just Jesus not only taught us the way we should walk to be, to be reconciled with his Father, but he showed us the way as well. If you read in the Gospel, what did Jesus said? Jesus said, you know, I am, I am the gates. Eh? I am the gate. Jesus uh, does not only say, I am the way. I am the way. But Jesus said, I am the gates. I am the gate too. If you want to have life, not life partially, not life partially, not life that's what we are searching, what we are uh, striving for on this face of the earth, but eternal life. It is a life fully that Jesus wants to offer us. And that life, no one can give it to you except Jesus Christ. Because we have to go. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. Is that when you come to church this morning, and then let's say this is only one door, one main, one main entrance door. If the main entrance door does not open, then no, you will climb to get into the, the church. This church is that the same with Jesus Christ? For you to be part of His kingdom, for you to be part of His church, you have. To, we have to follow Him. We have to listen to His voice. To His voice, we have to know His voice. We have to be familiar with His voice. Because, my brothers and sisters, we are living in a cacophony world. There is so much, so many noise, so much noise in our world today. So much noise now today. There's a cacophony. There are too many voices, eh? small voices. It's difficult for us to differentiate the true voice of God, the true voice of Christ. And sometimes we miss the voice. Sometimes we do not recognize His voice. How do we recognize His voice, my brothers and sisters? It is through a process of discernment. We need to listen to his word. If you want to know Jesus Christ, we need to listen to his word. We need to be familiar with his word. We need to be familiar with his teaching. And we need to let the word of God be part of our life, an integral part of our life. How many of us sometimes say we are Christian, we are Catholic, not even, not even a year past? Some people never open the Bible. Open the Word of God. Open the Word of God to meditate upon the, the Word of God. And we cannot just uh, satisfy ourselves by coming to the church on Sunday and then that's where we, we listen to the Word of God. At least we do some, we are here, that's good. But we need to do more. We need to delve more into the Word of God. We need to be familiar more with the Word of God. Because sometimes, my brothers and sisters, you have no word. Your other human word is not enough to really give a brother, a sister, strength and courage to speak with a brother. It is through the word of God we can find inspiration. If the word of God is part of our life, the word of God should be our inspiration to help our brothers, to comfort, to console our brothers and sisters. So it is very important that the Word of God is part of our life. Jesus as the gate, the fullness of life, is expressed beautifully in the response to your psalms. When the psalmists pray, the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near, let the waters. He leads me to revive my dripping spirit. He 
He guides me along the right path. He is true to his name. And I should walk in the valley of darkness. No evil will I fear. You are there with your cloak and your staff. With these, you give me comfort. You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil. My cup is overflowing. Surely, goodness and kindness shall, shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house, I shall dwell forever and ever. And this is a song that we like to do. We like to, to sing during the, the funeral to see what a better place we can be with the Lord. What a better head we can we can find repose. We can repose our heads. What a better shepherd we can put our hands and walk with us. Show us the true pastor. Show us the way. What a better hope we can have, my brothers and sisters, to rest in the presence of the Lord. Let us pray once again, my brothers and sisters, not to not to confuse the voice of the good shepherd because there are so many false shepherds around us in, in our world today, in our society today. But if we keep our eyes focused on the Lord, if we search for the good shepherd who is the truth, who is the life, there is no way we will not find what we are searching what we are looking for, because Jesus, He is the way. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear friends, let us stand and confess our faith. I believe in the Father. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Yahweh. 
for those discerning their vocation to ordain ministry or religious life, and for parents and educators who are entrusted with the ministry of shepherding to reflect the life of Christ to their children and students. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for peace in the midst of all the violence and tragedy in this world and particularly for those affected by the conflict in Ukraine and gang violence in our neighborhood and around the world. We pray that God will show mercy and support to those who suffer so unjustly and that this Easter season would be a day of peace and hope, of reconciliation and working together, of unity and joy for the whole of humanity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our young people, young men and women who are discerning their vocation in life, may on this vocation Sunday we help them discerning a vocation to the priesthood, deaconate, or consecrated life, and they will find strength and guidance to answer. Yes, to the call to serve the people of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. On this fourth Sunday of Easter, Good Shepherd Sunday, we pray for all those who are engaged in leadership in our local government and for community giving in works of charity and justice that their commitment, sacrifice, and good intentions be recognized and rewarded by the Lord as a good shepherd. May they find strength and courage to do their work. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in our prayer. In gratitude for our health and for healing for all those who are sick in our community, particularly those undergoing treatment for cancer, those who mourn for their loved ones, May they find healing and comfort in Christ for those who died and whose names are listed in the church's bulletin. May we celebrate everlasting life in Christ Jesus. And as we pray those prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, and for those who will ask us to pray for them and their loved ones, let us pray to the Lord. Lord O oh God, reveal the mystery of your love to all, especially our young people, and grant that they may listen to and hear the voice of the Good Shepherd as the guiding force of their lives, and offer their gifts as the foundation of the church and society, and so reflect your love to the world. We ask for this for our Lord Jesus Christ, His Son, who lives and reigns with the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Dear parishioners, the weekly collection posted in the bulletin shows that we are working below budget. Please remember your weekly contribution to support the church. It's very important to support our parish community. Thank you and God bless you.
because of our unending joy, we ask for this to Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you.
temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously give peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always with promise and safe from all distress. As we pray the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said, you are apostles, peace, I live you, my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace in unity in our fathers with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. My dear beloved, let us offer to one another this time of Christ.
Announcement. Welcome back, dear parishioners, and welcome to all of those who are visiting us today for the first time. If you'd like to be a member of our parish, please take the registration form at the main entrances of the church. Please fill it in and give it to one of the ushers or ministers of hospitality. Or you can pass by the office Mondays through Fridays from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. St. Helen's School is now accepting new students for the school year 2023 to 2024 from PK4, that's age four and up, VPK, step up for students, and AAA scholarships are accepted. Free breakfast and lunch are provided. For more information, please contact the school office at 954-739-7094, extension 2002. St. Helen's School is celebrating its 50th years of Golden Jubilee. There are many events that are being organized throughout by the students, faculty, and staff. We are called to rejoice and give thanks to God for the gift of Catholic education. We need your support and help. Today is the St. Helen Catholic School International Day of Art. After the 9 a.m. and the 10.30 a.m. Masses, please stop by the school cafeteria and visit the classrooms. Also, the eighth grade students are holding a car wash in the church parking lot. Please help and support them to prepare their graduation ceremony. Those who give deposits for the pilgrimage, please remember to send the other installments. Final payment is July 3rd, 2023. We will leave Miami from Lisbon, Portugal. The price is $3,998 and includes airfare, first class hotel, tours, guided tours, breakfast, and dinner daily. For more information, please stop by the church office or call 954-731-7314. You still have time to buy your tickets to support St. Helen Catholic Church religious concert on May the 5th, 2023. Tickets are available at the office and at the church entrance after each mass. Cost is $52 and $37. Thank you. Mother's Day is Sunday, May the 14th, 2023. Donations for Mother's Day flowers in memory of or in thanksgiving of loved ones are being accepted. Please bring your intentions so that the names can be entered in the bulletin. Envelopes are also available in the church entrances. Thank you for your support. The month of May is a month of Mary. Let us consecrate ourselves, our community, our family, to our Blessed Mother. Outside of the Mass, 
There is no prayer more pleasing to Our Lady and more efficacious for her intentions than the Holy Rosary. If you don't already have a spiritual discipline, please make an effort to pray the Rosary daily. Let us join our entire community to pray the Rosary every day at 7 p.m. under the pavilion, Monday through Saturday. <coughs> Please take home a copy of the Sunday Bulletin for more information. It's important to read it so you can be informed. The schedule of all church activities is posted in the bulletin. Thanks again and have a blessed day. Be safe going home. Thank you very much. Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, that and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son. We ask for this to our Lord Jesus Christ, his Son, who lives and reigns with the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our celebration has ended, go in peace to serve and love the Lord and love one another. My dear beloved, we have a wonderful and blessed day with the Lord. And tomorrow, this week, we begin the month of May, eh? month of May, month of Mary, month of our Blessed Mother. So every day we will have a rosary, rosary praying every day under the pavilion, the entire community. So we encourage you to join us for this month as we consecrate ourselves to our parish, to our Blessed